Hello everyone! Today we are doing the Hidden Arcane story instance. We're within Lorner's Pass and at the Derman Priory location. We're within the echoes of the past story and just within the replayable Hidden Arcane instance. So I'm going to skip ahead where possible. So I'm going to play through the entire story, but there'll be timestamps below so that you can skip ahead to whatever it is you may be stuck with. But I'll be covering how to do the four bosses as well as the four major achievements associated with them. And I'm going to skip little bits here and there to make the video quick and easy, but not skip anything that would be important or necessary. The five control Amen. dragons of Salvatore join now by Mortar. Mordemont. So we're going to head to the kitchen and I actually like this dialogue between the chefs because it got me thinking about the Ascended Cooking Collection where I'm pretty sure we talked to the sous chef and they had a food cart and I'm pretty sure there was bloodstone dust in that collection so I'm gonna have to look it up again. All right just a bit more chatting and we will head into the Priory Library. I'm just gonna let them talk. Uh, I know exactly where to go. And we're just going to stand here and wait until it pops up. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now we can speak. So it says to find a way to access the storage room, but if you look in the top right hand corner, it actually tells you to find three books. So my first time playing this through years ago, I did not know there were stairs to get to this top area and I kept looking, here's our first book, to see if like, I don't know if I found that one book on the mini map, if it would pop up, here's our second book, a hidden storage or something. I didn't realize I was looking for three books and I didn't realize there were stairs. So that's why I decided to put this entire instance as a guide, just in case there is even one other person who got stuck looking for that first book. Then it's worth it. All right, we're now must look for more books. So we're just gonna kind of climb our way up. And one more book. And rip anyone who was actively looking for a book in the center here because it's now going away. I'm just waiting for our friends to uh, make their way over. What took you so long? Getting the cipher from Explorer Campbell took longer than expected. We're sorry for the inconvenience. Well, don't waste my time. Tell me what you seek. And we're going to now inspect our hourglass. And this is where all the fun begins. So just to note the challenge moat, the, <laughs> that kind of rhymed a bit, there are, you want to activate them after the fact. So if you defeat a boss and you don't get the achievement, go back to its challenge moat and it will reset and give you another chance. So right now we're just waiting for the dialogue box to pop up because our friends are all across there. 
So our first boss is the facet of strength. And in order to get the strength without sacrifice achievement, you must avoid all the AOEs, which is pretty easy. They're bright and orange and also avoid its pull. I'm just gonna show you what it's like to use the challenge mode. So the facet of strength had been defeated by me. I didn't get the achievement, so I just reactivated the challenge mode. And now I'm gonna show you with a ranged weapon what that pull looks like. That there. So just dodge that attack and avoid the AOEs and you'll get the achievement. Feel free to take your time and use a ranged weapon. I actually found going up close was pretty easy. I didn't have to dodge the AOEs. I could easily just walk off. Once I knew about the pull attack, it was pretty straightforward. And there we have it, our strength without sacrifice achievement. And I'm gonna move forward. So I'm just gonna skip this, keep it short and sweet. Use this teleportation device. So there's three summon facets here. You only need to defeat one. And when you defeat it, you're going to be glowing. And in this case, red. And what we do is we line up red with red. When we match them up, we got this protective bond or the shield that you can see. And that allows us to go over that purple AOE. Otherwise it would take us down pretty fast. So I'm just gonna kind of reset it. I don't know if it's necessary, but I do know it's on a countdown. So I just picked one of the facets and again, got that red orb and walked into the red light. So we're approaching our second boss here is its challenge mode in case you need to reset. And this is the facet of light. So it's going to be using a bit of the same type of strategy that we just used. So this boss needs to be attacked within that purple AOE. And in order to do that, we need to take out these summon facets in order to get that protective bond. Now, as you can see, they have their own buff under their nameplate, their own protective bond, so we need to wait for it to cool down before we can attack it. This particular facet came out of the blue light, so I would need to line blue with blue in order to get that protective bond to enter that AOE. However, we would like to get the achievement better red than dead, which means we can only use the red attunement. And one thing to note, if you pick up a blue or a green attunement, just don't match it up with the light. Let it run out. Fairly straightforward, it just takes an extra bit of time to do it. The middle facets can be any color, but if you don't kill them quick enough, they will disappear. Just waiting for this facet to cool down, and then we can get our red attunement. and preparing ourselves to try and dish out as much damage as possible. So now we have our protective shield. We can enter the purple AOE. And I'm curious if you have, you know, a ranger or a mesmer, if your illusions or whatnot would be able to enter the AOE because when I pull my thieves, they enter no problem. But again, it's not enough damage to take down the boss. So I'm just gonna skip ahead. Do we have another facet from the middle? Not quick enough, but over here we have a red one. So I've been here quite a while. I have only been getting mostly greens and blues. That's the only thing with this achievement. You just have to be patient. And there is a health drain. You can see the little square buff. So every once in a while, just remember to kind of keep an eye on your health. Otherwise, it's fairly straightforward. Just avoid the AOEs that the boss throws at you. 
take out the facets and hope a new one comes with the correct color. And again, if you didn't care for the achievement, just match the colors, blue and green, red, however they come, and you can get through it a lot faster. That's how I do it. And there we have it, there's our achievement. So let's move forward. Skipping again. Next up, we have our fragile effect. So the second we run through that, we have one HP. So we need to be very careful of the shards that are exploding everywhere because they can down us. At the end, there is a vortex crystal, which we'll be transferring this fragile effect to so that we can take it out because there is this shield. It's hard to see. Vortex crystal steals the shield from us. We're able to knock it out and get through that barrier that was kind of hard to see. We're approaching our third boss. That was our challenge mode. This one is our faucet of darkness. Now, in order to apply damage to this boss, we need to take the fragile effect, transfer it to a vortex crystal. And when we hit the vortex crystal, it applies damage directly to the boss. Now, in order to get to the exposed weakness achievement, we must take the boss from a 75% health down to zero within 15 seconds. So what we're going to do is instead of taking out the vortex crystals one by one, we're going to transfer the fragile effect to them so that they're all ready to go. I completely just walked over that. And then we'll take them out all at the same time. Because the achievement's 75% to zero, you can take out one of these crystals now. I think you could even take out two, but I only played around with one. And then you just have one less to do, but 15 seconds goes by, just enough for you to do it. And the boss, when they do the big orange AOE, that's when they're going to drop one of these fragile effects. Quick. So I'm just prepping to try and take out as many as I can as quickly as possible. And you can see the faucet of darkness, their health going down as I'm doing this. I wasn't graceful about it, but I got the exposed weakness achievement. Here it is. And onwards. So we're now approaching our third boss. And it's basically a combination of all the other bosses, So I am doing the challenge mode. So this is our malevolent memory boss. In order to take down damage to this boss, just like the previous boss, you need to get the fragile effect and transfer it to a vortex crystal. Hit it and we took some damage to our boss. Now, in order to get the achievement, Exposed Weakness Redux, you can't transfer any boons to our Vortex Crystal. So you need to be mindful of any skills, runes, or food, so that when you hover by this Vortex Crystal and it steals that fragile effect, that it's not stealing any boons either. 
For me, I was struggling because anytime I dodge, I get haste. I swapped out a skill so that it wouldn't do that, but I was still getting it. The struggle for me was real because I switched off the skill. I was still getting haste. I don't know how to turn it off. So I basically did this without dodging, which as a thief, that is my entire strategy. I dodge everything. So what I could do is if I did accidentally dodge, I could still pick up the fragile effect. I just had to wait for the haste to completely cool down before I approached the vortex crystal. So another phase, we now have to match colors in order to apply damage. So our boss is within this AOE, no damage is coming across, so we need to match colors. Thankfully, you don't have to think about it, whatever color is up, whatever color you'll get from your summit facet for the most part. So the trick though is we need the fragile effect as well. So we need to enter in both with the rune attunement and the fragile effect at the same time. But the second you pick up the fragile effect, you have one HP. So one thing I was doing was to take down our facet close to zero health and then waiting for a fragile effect to pop up and then heading over to the attunement at the same time. Another thing to note, do not interact with that rock pile is that a teleportation device you'll see it if you're in the if you activated the challenge mode it will take you out of the instance i accidentally did that as you can see here i'm struggling all my fragile effects are within aoe's Going forward, you'll see me kind of try and use that strategy a bit more where I lure the, the facet, bring down its health, and last minute kind of grab the fragile effect. So now we're just back to the regular old vortex crystal method. So really just two phases here. Apply damage by transferring the fragile effect to the vortex crystal. And then at certain health percentages, you're going to have to use your attunements other than that, the achievement is pretty straightforward. Just defeat the boss like you would. Just be mindful of any boons. Another thing to be mindful of is if you activate the challenge mode, so for instance, you defeated the boss, but you didn't get the achievement, there are some bugs, and this is where I was struggling. If you die, you, you retry from checkpoint, but the achievement doesn't reset, and the boss's health resets to 100. So then it becomes very frustrating because the only way to be eligible for the achievement is to kill the boss again, reactivate the challenge moat again, or leave the instance and have to redo all the dialogue and all the other bosses. And on top of that, anytime you die, the boss's health is resetting, which isn't so bad if you die and you're still eligible for the achievement, but if you die and you're not eligible, then you're basically defeating the boss for nothing. All right, that is it. That is everything. I hope the video was helpful and I don't know, maybe see you around.